Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here for today's video We are back with a second installment of a video that I posted a couple months ago Which is 10 things that I no longer buy we are going to be covering all things beauty in this video So skincare hair care makeup really anything in the beauty realm of things that I used to be obsessed with used to use religiously and repurchase over and over that I no longer touch with a 10 foot pole. So if you're curious to hear why I no longer buy these 10 things and what I purchase instead, if anything, or if it's just something that I've completely gotten rid of altogether, you've come to the right spot. We are going to jump right into that. Before we do, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you're new here, click on that notification bell and drop a comment below letting me know what a product is that you used to love that you no longer buy either. Instagram and TikTok handles are right here. Lightroom preset filters for editing Instagram photos along with merch, disc discount codes, links, timestamps, and everything else you could need from me are listed in my description box below. All right, let's jump into it. All right, let's start off with skincare products first. So this first item is something that, oh my gosh, I used to love so much. I used it every single night to remove makeup. It truly was my Hoyle, Hoyle Grail. <laughs> no. <laughs> Holy Grail oil cleanser. My Hoyle Grail. And it is Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse. So if you've been around since the very, very beginning before I even had a YouTube channel, when I had a little short stint with having a blog, then you might remember that this was something that I just recommended to everyone. It was like, you must try, it's the best. And for what it's worth, it works great. It's very lightweight, it breaks down your makeup easily, rinses it right off, and it's not greasy either, like a lot of other oil cleansers. So I loved it, but the pain that this eventually put me through was too much to be forgiven. So like most, if not all Dermalogica products, their pre-cleanse oil cleanser has a lot of essential oils in it, and it is fragrant, like it's an intense smell. I can still smell it in my head. Does that make any sense? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? How you can remember a smell? That's actually really interesting. Anyway, so it's very, very fragrant and I did not used to have issue with fragrances and essential oils in my skincare products, but as time went on, I started to feel like this was causing a little bit of stinging and burning for me. Every time I used it, my face looked really red. So I was just trying to figure out what was causing that and decided to put this to the side and start using some other things for a while. So I think I gave it up for a few months and then I was like, okay, let's reintroduce it. Kind of like a, what's it called? An elimination diet. That's what I'm trying to think of. You know how doctors will do that to try to figure out if you have food intolerances? Well, that's what I was doing with my skincare routine to figure out what was causing issue for me. So when I reintroduced it a few months later, oh no, as Phoebe would say, oh no. My face had a horrible reaction to this product. I had a lot of burning and stinging. It was itchy, it was red, it was painful, really splotchy. So I was like, all right. This is my proof. I cannot use this product anymore. It just does not agree with my skin. So I no longer purchase Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse, even though it really, it, I mean, it's a great product. It works really well. So if you're not irritated by fragrances and essential oils, it still is something that I would recommend if you're wanting to spend that amount of money. I do still think spending that much money on an oil cleanser is something that I'm not super interested in doing anymore, but still, I think it's good. What I personally like to use instead for an oil cleanser is actually something that I think I mentioned in the last video, which is the Neutrogena body oil. So I know it says it's for the body, but there's no reason you can't use it on the face. It's fragrance and essential oil free. It works so well and like Dermalogica pre-cleanse, it's not greasy or super, super, I don't know. Like obviously it's an oil, but there are greasy oils and then there are just not greasy oils. And I feel like the Neutrogena body oil is one of those. It's not greasy or unpleasant. So I would highly recommend that one, but Dermalogica pre-cleanse is no more for me. All right, the next skincare product is another cleanser, but this time just a regular facial cleanser. So it's not an oil cleanser, it's not designed for makeup removal, and I do feel a little bit odd including it in this video because it wasn't that long ago that I considered this to be one of my holy grail cleansers. I actually included it in my cleanser holy grails video. So if you haven't seen that yet and you're curious to see what I included in the video at the time, I will list that below, but obviously, things have changed. My preferences have, you know, they've evolved a little bit. And the cleanser is the CeraVe Foaming Facial Cleanser. So don't get me wrong, don't get it twisted. There is nothing wrong with this cleanser. It's a great option, it's affordable, the ingredients are right, it has a good formula, 
But as time went on and I was purchasing more and more cleansers to test out, I realized that I was just never reaching for it anymore. So I just don't absolutely love the formula. There are other gel-like cleansers that I reach for over that every single time because I feel like the CeraVe Foaming Facial Cleanser is just a little bit stiff if you know what I mean. So it lathers up really well, but I feel like it just doesn't rinse off the skin as easily as others. And while it doesn't leave my skin feeling stripped, I have other cleansers that leave my skin feeling replenished after. And I don't, I don't know. I just never really felt that same way with the CeraVe Foaming Facial Cleanser, even though again, it's not a drying or stripping cleanser. So my personal favorite gel-like cleanser is the Geek and Gorgeous Jelly Joker Cleanser. That is still my number one all-time holy grail favorite another cleanser i've been obsessed with recently is actually more of like a milky cleanser but it's still a super lightweight it's the by the milk melt cleanser so those are the kinds of cleansers i find myself reaching for all the time now ones that are really silky and slippery and slidey and the CeraVe foaming facial cleanser just isn't quite like that so again there's nothing wrong with it if you use it and still love it amazing i'm happy for you but i no longer purchase this all right and the last skincare product is a serum that i feel like won't be that surprising to hear i think a lot of people have kind of gone through this same thought process with this product and it is the ordinary's niacinamide serum so of course when we all first discovered this it was like hold the phone this is the most amazing thing ever it has 10 percent niacinamide it's super affordable we'll never need another product like this again but it's kind of the same story for me as the CeraVe Foaming Facial Cleanser where I was diehard for it for a long time, but as time went on, I realized I was never reaching for it and that's because I just am not obsessed with the formula. So that's a big reason why I don't plan to repurchase this and why I never use it anymore. Another is because I just really don't like using multiple serums. The more serums you add, the more likely you are to have pilling or streaking or just weirdness. A lot of times makeup won't apply well on top of multiple products like that. It's just not my favorite thing to do. I would so much rather spend a little bit more money on one serum that has multiple ingredients included that are amazing. So you know what I mean? More bang for your buck. And all in one versus like four to get all of those ingredients. I just don't like to do that. And I just, I don't want it. I don't want it. I want to kind of declutter my entire life, even though you guys should see the skincare clutter in my bathroom. <laughs> my friends come over and they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, but thanks for asking. So I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this video already know that my personal favorite serum is the Dermatology Needleless Serum. This to me is the perfect example of spending a little bit more to get a lot of bang for your buck. It has niacinamide, but it also has so many other amazing ingredients to help with replenishing the skin, anti-aging, calming and soothing. It's just that girl, if you know what I mean. And the formula is incredible. None of the kind of sticky weirdness that you get with some of the ordinary serums. So I would highly recommend it. I do have a 20% off link with Dermatology. It's always in the description boxes of my videos. And I say link like that because it used to be a code. It's not a code anymore. So you have to click through that link to get 20% off applied at checkout. You obviously don't have to do that, but I like to let you guys know in case you want to save some extra money. So, okay. That's it for skincare, let's move along to makeup. Oh my gosh, I don't even wanna talk about this product because I still am not over it. I haven't recovered, it still is something that I think about all the time. <laughs> I just can't move on from this product. It was the best and still to this day is the absolute best drugstore foundation I have ever tried, ever. And I've tried a lot and it is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation. Oh, I miss you. I know that at this point, so many people know about this foundation because it's been seriously hyped for good reason. But if you have not tried this, let me just tell you a little bit about it. It is incredibly liquidy and lightweight. It feels like it should be called a serum foundation because it's that kind of formula. It's really liquidy and watery and runny. And when you apply it to the skin, it feels like you're wearing nothing. It's so weightless, but you get medium to full coverage and the most beautiful natural radiant finish to the skin. It's not overly dewy to where it looks shiny, but it's definitely not matte. It just enhances the skin and gives you the most flawless finish. I used to reach for this over all of my high-end foundations every single day. Like it was that good. I started to realize kind of similarly to Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse that whenever I was using it, my face was getting irritated. And it was interesting because it wasn't when I applied it. It wasn't even really during the day while I was wearing it that I noticed it. It was when I removed it immediately after. I realized my skin looked red and flushed and it felt uncomfortable and just dry and tight. 
then I realized that on days when I wasn't wearing it, I wasn't having that problem at all. So I have had to give this up. It does have added fragrances. If they ever came out with a fragrance free version of this, I would throw away all of my foundations. Well, I wouldn't do that because that's wasteful, but I would feel that I could throw away all of my foundations and never use anything else again for the rest of my life. Like, oh my gosh. So I will say that I have recently tried their Hyaluronic Tinted Serum Foundation. And while that one is definitely not as runny and liquidy as the Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation, I feel like I end up with a really similar result where it feels completely weightless on the skin. I'm actually wearing it now. You get a really natural radiant finish, medium to full buildable coverage. It's really really nice even though it's not the exact same thing So that one's fragrance and essential oil free So if you're looking for something similar if you're feeling as devastated as I am Then I would definitely recommend trying that one out, but I still will be waiting for a fragrance free version I may be waiting forever but I'll keep waiting. All right, next makeup product is actually not a product, but an entire brand. Even though I feel like I need to say that I haven't boycotted this brand entirely. It's not like I'm mad at them. Like I refuse to buy from you. It's nothing like that. And I actually still have several products from them that I do really love and will continue to repurchase. But everything else that they come out with, I mean, over the past several years, I have not purchased. I don't plan to purchase. I have zero interest in and the brand is ColourPop. This makes me so sad because they were one of my absolute favorite brands. I feel like they had so many core staple products that were unique to them, that were really, really amazing, that kind of made their brand. It's like these were the products that ColourPop was known for. And the first product that I think of immediately is their Ultra Satin Liquid Lip. This used to be one of my favorite makeup products ever, and they completely got rid of that product altogether. So if you never tried that, I'm sorry about it because it was one of the best lip products that I had ever tried and that I owned. I just don't know why they deleted those. So ColourPop to me now feels like a fast fashion brand. I was thinking about it. I'm like, they're like the Zara or H&M of makeup. And they didn't used to be that way, but I know that it obviously works well for them. So you know, do what works, I guess. But I just have no interest in like all of these themed, bright, candy colored collections. It's just, it's not my vibe, you know? So I've had to accept that reality and move along from ColourPop. But like I said, they do still have some amazing products, like their Pretty Fresh line, the concealer, the tinted moisturizer. Those are amazing, would highly recommend those. They have really good eyebrow products, their BFF Brownie Points Mascara. That's something that I talked about in a recent video where I shared drugstore products that feel high end. So they still have some good staples, it's just not what it used to be. All right, the very last makeup product is a mascara and it is CoverGirl Lash Blast. So they have so many different forms or versions of their Lash Blast Mascara. So it's not just one that I had an attachment to that I no longer purchase. It really was all of them. They have the orange, the green, the purple, the pink, and I just used to bounce back and forth between all of them because I really, really loved them. But I just feel like the wand, it's just not fully where it needs to be to be as amazing as it could. So if you've never tried a CoverGirl Lash Blast Mascara, they all have a plastic wand and the different colored tubes have just slight variations to the wand shape and size, some more than others, but they're all plastic. But I feel like the central problem with all of them is that the actual bristles are too short and the wand itself is too fat, it's just too big. So the combination of the really big wand with bristles that are a little bit too short means that you can't get lashes that are as lengthened and separated as you could if you had a little bit of a skinnier wand with longer, more separated bristles. Does that make sense? So a perfect example of, I feel like, a brand that does this right is the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. So many of you guys already know, I'm sure, that that is my absolute favorite mascara, but that has the plastic wand. It's just the right thickness and it has longer bristles. So you just, you really get that look with it. So I would definitely recommend that over CoverGirl Lash Blast any day. I actually included both of those videos in a drugstore mascara showdown where I compared, I think like seven, eight different drugstore mascaras and showed you guys which ones I think are the absolute best. So I'll link that below if you haven't seen that yet. I'll also link below a video where I show you guys my lash tips and tricks because the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara is actually not it's not the only one that I use. I have a whole process to get really long, fluffy, voluminous lashes. So I'll list that below as well. But CoverGirl Lash Blast, I do not spend money on anymore. Okay, let's move on to hair care next. So this first item is something that I never felt dedicated or loyal to. I never had a love affair with it. 
if you want to say that. I probably purchased them a total of two times and then I was like, these are terrible. You know, so a little different than other products in this video, but I still wanted to include it. So the product is our Lush Shampoo Bars, and I purchased these when I knew absolutely nothing about hair care, keep that in mind, but they were recommended to me by a friend. So she said they were amazing. She had a friend who used them and loved them. So I was like, all right, I want in, ran out to Lush, purchased some shampoo bars, and they made my hair feel like complete straw. Oh my gosh, my hair was snarled and tangled and matted and just everything bad that could happen to your hair after using a shampoo that doesn't work wonders on your hair. Mm -hmm. All of those things happened. It was terrible. So I went back to look and see what the ingredients are in these shampoo bars today. I don't know if they have changed since I used them because it was years ago, but Still to this day, essentially the only ingredients in them are sodium lauryl sulfate and essential oils. So I was like, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. There's nothing else in there to help to condition the hair. And you guys know, you know, I am not part of the sulfate hate train, but the reality is that there are certain sulfates, especially like sodium lauryl sulfate, that can just be stripping to the hair. So I don't use sulfate-based shampoos every single week. But if I do use one, I want it to be one that has other ingredients in it to help to protect the hair so that your hair is not left feeling just dry and stripped like it was when I used these shampoo bars. So I definitely would not recommend these as something that you use frequently in your hair care routine. This type of thing is something that I would say use infrequently to clarify if you want to but at the same time I think there's so many other clarifying options that are much better for the hair that will not leave your hair in that sort of hay like state like mine was so these are a no for me okay the next hair care product is something from biolage and I don't know if this was completely discontinued or if it's one of those things that they reformulated and renamed but I can't find this product anywhere the original that I used to use no longer exists so I don't remember the official name of the product but I believe it was the biolage detangling spray if any of you guys used to use this product and you remember, you have to let me know in the comments below, but I used to love this detangling spray. If you've never tried Biolash products before, they have a very distinct fragrance and the smell is just so good. Immediately takes me back to my high school days. Not that I really have that fond of memories from those days anyway, but this is a product that my mom used to always have several of in her vanity. So I used to sneak on down to her bathroom, steal the Biolage detangler after I washed my hair, be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I loved it. I felt like it detangled my hair so, so well, but I feel like that product wasn't as conditioning as other detangling sprays that I use now. But Biolage has this new product. I actually don't know how new it is, but it's new to me. It's called their Coconut Infusion, I think all-in-one spray. Of course, I will have a photo of it here and list it below or here. I don't know where I'm gonna put the photo overlay yet, but this is such a good product and it took me right back to that because I feel like, well, number one, it has the same exact smell as the original Biolash Detangler, so that was a very pleasant surprise, but I feel like it's an upgrade from that where it helps to detangle very well, similarly to that original product, but it conditions even better and it has such amazing ingredients, you guys. The second ingredient is coconut oil. It has amodimethicone, modified silicones, quaternary ammonium compounds, all the things that I've talked about in videos like bond repair. I'll list that video below if you haven't seen that yet. And my video on how coconut oil is really beneficial for the hair. So seeing all of those on this list, I was like, yes, 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 yes. Truly such great ingredients for the hair. So if you feel just this attachment to the Biolage scent like I did, it really does remind me of my mom, you have to try this new spray because I think it's so great. So of course I'll have that in the description box, but I thought that I had to include that original product for this reason because now that I've discovered it, I just, I feel like it's bringing me back to the good old days. Okay, the last hair care product is actually a tool and it's teasing combs in general. So obviously part of the reason for me no longer purchasing these is because times have changed and the teased poof look is just not in style like it once was so that's part of it but the other big part of it is that teasing the hair is so so not good for the hair i feel like a lot of people either underestimate or just don't really realize the damage that mechanical wear and tear can have to the hair and obviously there's so many things that can contribute to hair damage but ultimately 
brushing and combing the hair, especially if the hair is tangled, is what causes the hair to eventually snap or break. So doing that so close to the root where you have this fresh, undamaged hair, I mean, especially if you're like me and your roots are grown out because you haven't gotten highlights in a while and bleach hasn't had a chance to affect this hair yet, like this is fresh, this is fresh, untouched hair and taking a teasing comb and back combing it and basically creating a rat's nest on the top of your head is just begging for breakage and high up breakage too. <sighs> oh my gosh, no, that makes me sweat. So I do not tease my hair at all anymore. And also not just the actual movement of doing that, but then trying to brush out the hair after, that's really where the biggest problem is because then you're trying to brush through a rat's nest. All right, the last product that I no longer purchase is a beauty care product and it is any EOS lip balm, but especially the little egg shaped lip balms from EOS. I'm sure so many of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Everybody had these in high school, everybody. I don't know if anyone still uses these anymore, but truly like you would just see the little egg shaped outline in everyone's jeans pocket because this was everyone's favorite lip balm, including myself. I really loved it. My personal favorite was the light blue one that had the slightly minty smell. I can still smell that. I used that every single day for probably two years. And I could not connect the dots that that gave me a serious allergic reaction on my lips. So what started to happen is I have these little bumps all over my lips all the time that just never fully went away. They may kind of get better for a while, but I just continuously had these bumps on my lips. So I thought maybe I had cold sores because I had a couple girlfriends that would get cold sores. So I was like, maybe I get those too, but they were never like swollen or infected looking or feeling. They just were these little bumps and I stopped using the lip balm, not knowing that. And they completely went away. And this is when I started my obsession with Vaseline lip therapy, we'll get there. But it wasn't until I had a friend who told me that EOS lip balms gave her a horrible rash that I was like, Oh my gosh, me too, because I only had that rash when I was using that product and the second I stopped, it went away and I have never had that happen to me ever again all these years later. So I don't get cold sores, it wasn't that, it was just a rash or a reaction to that product, which makes me so confused. I'm like, I wanna know what was in that that made me have that reaction, but you guys will have to let me know if that happened to any of you. So that's why you will not catch me using an EOS little egg lip balm ever, ever again. Vaseline lip therapy is where it's at. It is the absolute best lip product I have ever used. Nothing keeps my lips feeling conditioned and moisturized and not dry as long as possible. Wait, what am I saying right now? Nothing does for me what Vaseline lip therapy does. It's the longest lasting lip conditioning product I have ever used. Like it truly is just the best and it's so dirt cheap. So you know I will list that below for you, but dang, yeah, I need to know if anyone else got a rash from the EOS Little Eggy. All right, you guys, those are all the products that I wanted to talk through today, which means that we have made it to the end of this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and had fun hanging out with me today. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if any of the products that I talked about are things that you no longer purchase as well, or maybe you still purchase them and love them, and that's totally fair as well. Let me know that too. Whatever you use is none of my business, and again, I'm not not saying that any of these are bad products that nobody should use. We all have different preferences at the end of the day. So if there's anything else that you used to love that I didn't talk about that you no longer purchase, let me know that as well. If you would like a part three of this video at some point in the future, I can definitely do that. So drop a comment, let a girl know. But if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing all of those things. It really, really does help to support me with the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate you so, so much. Make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.